you hear that? Two weeks this car spent in the shop. Because, you know, teenagers. Always gotta get stuff worked on them. But stuff worked on them. They need work done. That thing. The gears in there. Still broken. What gives? Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. That's, that's what's happening right now. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just, you know, I got some stuff I need to get done. Wow, the car is dirty. Really, really dirty out there. It hasn't rained here in what feels like an eternity. It's been like some drizzle. Nothing significant. It's November. No, it's not. It's December. December, and I've been outside almost every day watering plant. What? Okay, all right. Almost forgot something very important there. Can't get out of the car with the seatbelt on. I need to put my mask on, and I just put on this, so it's gonna be sticking to my lips. I have a whole bunch of errands to run, and I thought I would bring y'all along with me. Also, funny story, Turbo, the puppy, I've been letting Turbo wander the house a little bit more lately, and he was in my bathroom with me when I was cutting my hair, and he ran off with three of my, three, three of my hair guards. So that's what's going on there, it's fine. Not a big deal, my hair grows fast, but it looks, Looks kind of silly. Getting some new guards soon and I'll be able to fix that. So I'm here because I need light diffuser panels. I'll explain that later on in the video. And some hooks to hang potted plants from the ceiling with. I'm gonna grab a little bit more mulch because it's still warm out. And they still have the gates open to the garden department so I figured I may as well get some just in case. And I don't know, something else I have it written down. Whoa, that would do it. That'll heat things up, 19 ceiling tiles. Here it is, there we go. Five of them, perfect. I've had trouble getting a hold of these. I actually had some that I ordered that were black. They didn't ship yet, and I ordered them like a month ago. You know the stuff going on overseas, I'm guessing that has something to do with it. I went ahead and canceled that and figured that this is, this is fine. This is just to hold plants up above a drainage tray. Doesn't need to be fancy. And I know, cannot come here without showing the house plants. So here they are, the background music, kind of loud, like it's, an artist where I will definitely get a strike. So I have to keep this short and choppy as we look through here. It really though, it's like the same stuff they had last time I was here. It's fun little house plants. Yep. Yeah, no. The stuff that I've been seeing here for a while. Sansevierias, ficus, Diefenbachia, Scandepsis, and various Peperomias. Huh. Lab test. Set a sample in, it's easy enough. Hmm. How much? That's better than some of the other ones I've seen online. Well, give us a try. Look at this poinsettia right here. Look at that. It's unusual. It's like a sunset one. So pretty. All right, need to go outside and get some mulch. Oh, the Christmas trees are gone. Oh no, they're not, they're right there. Well, they were all over, you get it. I know that I feel like I'd be a sucker to get this because it's just a green giant arborvitae in a decorative pot with ornament. But it's cute and I want more evergreens outside. The green giants though, they brown up during the winter. I love the round form arborvitaes. They're so cute. Ugh, I love the gushiki false hollies. They're so pretty. All variegated and spiky and stabby. It's fun color. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. I only need six bags. I feel like trying to find a flatbed and transferring everything over. There we go. I think that should leave enough room. Enough room, enough room for what? Yeah, I just realized that I didn't, didn't fully introduce this video, did I? Oh, look at that close up on the stitching. That's just, I set my phone down for like half a second so I can put my seatbelt on and I'm amused by the little things. One of the local nurseries here, Greenscape, I go there very frequently. They are closing down Sunday for the rest of the season. They don't open up until I think March. So I'm gonna hop in there, have a look at the house plants, see what they have left in stock. First, I have to run to Sam's. I don't think I'm gonna take y'all along with me for that. I'm just running in to grab another external hard drive. Oh, and an LED shop light. So one of those is broken that's on the plant stands. It's been a few years, so I don't remember if these are the right ones or not, but it's all they have. Linkable LED, 20 bucks. Come on, seems like a good deal. I think I need three. I know that one, pretty sure two of them need to be replaced. I'm gonna put an additional one on a, that's not even happening in this video. So many greens. All right, it's actually fairly crowded here. 
and has been everywhere I've gone, so the whole entire running errands and vlogging thing didn't really work out. So if I don't have any footage from while I'm here, maybe there'll be a small plant haul in the next clip, who knows? So we'll find out. Been in here enjoying all of the lovely, beautiful succulents and house plants, the great selection. And then I see these passion fruit. I'm like, oh, that's awesome, they have passion fruit. And then I realize, oh, I forgot to bring my passion vine in. So I might be dead. I don't know. Oops. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. Oh, it's so nice and full and shiny and sparkly. Reptophore decursiva. Beautiful. Oh. Huh, okay, all right. After seeing that, I'm like, yeah, I think that mine could use a little bit of love. Thank goodness for having the hangers in the car, right? Never use them for dry cleaning, but they certainly do come in nifty for plants. Yes, you can already see it, but we'll take these inside. Have a little plant haul. What are you doing over there? How'd you get over there? How'd you get over there, Turbo? What are you doing? Oh, you're not... Yeah, you're not gonna fit through there anymore, Turbo. Way too big for that. There we go. How'd that happen? How'd you get locked out? You good boy. Oh, so much fun. So much energy. Okay, to start things off, not plants, but look at, aren't these adorable? Looks better in person, because, you know, the sink. I've been trying to find some planters that look like ornaments for a very, very long time. It's odd that that's a difficult thing to find. I've been able to find, like, teeny tiny ones, but I wanted something that I could, like, drop a little cyclamen or something like that inside of, and... Well, I found them. Here they are. Very ornamenty, very festive, not plants, so... Don't worry, it's all a pill from here. The rest of everything is, it's all plants. And yet, yeah, really, in person, they, it looks a lot better right there. On the camera with the faucet there, that's terrible. And really, I don't know that these even need plants in them. Because if you put a plant in them, you have to take the top off and then they don't look as ornamenty, but could always like put the top something like that and just do a little succulent out the side. I don't know, I thought they were cute. They work, they're fun. There's a Christmas blobfish. Okay, and then we have to just take a quick moment to appreciate the amaryllis. These things are doing so wonderfully, which I can't take credit for, obviously, because they're wax bulbs, but just look at how full they are. The amount of blooms coming out of these bulbs is insane. They are so full. They're like fluffy almost. Such short-lived flowers. That one that's already burning out there. That's all right. That's why I want to go ahead and show them now before they're all gone. And I think every single one of these, at least this one and this one over here, have another bud hanging out down low. So there will be more to come once the ones that are all pretty and showy right now, once those start to die off. There'll still be more flowers to appreciate. <laughs> he heard me say a little while ago that I think I was going to do the plant hall outdoors. And he's been like, um, did you say outdoors? Why you tortured me? I'm gonna go outside for playtime. Pumpkin. Such a sweetheart, baby girl. Good girl, pumpkin. Putting your pumpkin on camera, pumpkin. Yes, it is an absolutely beautiful day. Cloudy. Oh, it's the next day from the last clip you saw. It got, you know, I forget that it gets dark so early, so that happened. It's like 65 degrees. Very foggy. Think we might get some rain. This isn't rain. This is just, it was so foggy that there was... A slight layer of mist to the fog and now things are wet, which is good because I mentioned it is so dry. So, so, so dry. You need to go outside, you hit the bells. Go on, get the bells. Get it, Turbo. Get it. Get it, Turbo. You want to go outdoors? Get it. Working on it. Not quite there yet. All right, well, in my head, this, this is going to be a much more beautiful backdrop than it actually is. I think it's beautiful because everything around St. Louis right now is just brown and dead. Yet the weather is still lovely. It's throwing me off. Next week we have days where it's going to be in, I think, the mid to upper 70s and lower 60s. Oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait. It is nice to be sitting back outside again, though. It's been a while. I need to paint this table. Pieces are starting to flake off. I was never a fan of the color anyways. This was $5 at the grocery store. A couple years ago in the fall time, they were clearancing out summer stuff. And I'm like, okay, $5, I'll paint it. And then I never did. But now that's something I will get around to. Want to see some plants? That cracking sound was the sound of a plastic pot breaking in my hand. Oops, no big deal. All right, start things off. Okay, also, 
the majority of everything are house plants. Just, there's just a few perennials here. So just bear with me. It's okay. I know people get excited about house plants and then they see something like this and they go, what? No. This is a hookara called Forever Red. And isn't it just beautiful? I absolutely love this plant. I saw it at the nursery. It was hanging out with a bunch of greens that you could pick out and make your own wreaths and those things. And I don't know. I just, I had to have one. Undersides of the foliage, gorgeous tone of a reddish purple and the tops are almost like a chocolatey red if that's a thing burgundy i don't know i mentioned before i'm not good with shades but that doesn't matter it's pretty that's what that comes down to the tag says it's a fast growing selection displays handsome ruffled red leaves the tall spikes bear white flowers in summer seven to 14 inches high space 14 inches apart blooms in autumn hardiness zones four through nine that's pretty typical hooker stuff. They're also size seven to 14 inches. It's a little bit broad. Not really sure what to do with that. I don't know if they're saying that the foliage is going to stay seven inches and then the flower spikes 14. I guess we'll all find out together. I really like hookahs for planters because where I live and I'm like right on the line of 6A and 6B and typically hookahs are mostly evergreen here. It's always going to depend on the winter They'll hold on to a good amount of their foliage throughout the winter time and usually as winter starts to come to an end what they've held on during winter time will start to kind of crumble and fall back you cut that off and then they'll burst out with some nice new growth i only got one which is a mistake i usually try not to make when buying perennials usually getting them in threes or fives is ideal if you want to incorporate them into the landscape but that gets really pricey and i got this to put into a planter so i think the one is just fine that's going to be more of an excellent plant for a winter arrangement an arrangement that is also going to have these in it look at can you see it Cameron doesn't want to focus you can kind of see it look it's so pretty it's a hellebore lovely winter blooming perennial there's no variety name here on the tag it just says hellebore Hello, Boris. Can't do much with that other than just look at it and just like with the hooker say, well, it's pretty. <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out what it does. It's already doing it. When it comes to hellebores, I prefer the ones that have an upright flower to them, which these do. Oftentimes when hellebores are for sale, when I see them at the nurseries, typically they aren't quite in flower yet. So it can be hard to tell which type they are. So when I saw these, I was like, oh, well, this is nice. I know what I'm going to be getting into here. No mystery involved, anything like that. I got two. I I should bring the other one over here also. Really pretty white flowers that I think start off white. From looking at the inside of the plant, it looks like the more immature flowers are white. And then they age off into this really lovely, it looks more green in person, it looks kind of yellow on the screen. So there's one that's starting to age out. It's getting some green onto the flowers. And then uh, here's one that's fully green. Looks kind of yellow on camera, but it's green. The great thing about hellebores, I think one of the reasons that so many of us enjoy growing them is because they flower when nothing else is flowering in colder climates. I believe this variety said five through nine on it. Five through nine, yeah. So nice and sturdy. I don't know if this is its actual bloom time being early to mid-December. I could have potentially been forced. I don't really see that with hellebores very often. At least not that I'm aware of. You can do just about anything with the right lights and different types of chemicals. So perhaps it's one that would normally bloom in April for all I know. I have no idea. I don't grow a ton of them because it's usually hard to tell when I see them at the nursery whether or not they're going to have a flower that hangs down. A lot of hellebores, the flowers drape and dangle, which is really pretty. It's a nice little bell to look at, but I do prefer the ones that face upright. And I don't see those for sale locally very often. There are some great places to order them, but I, I don't know, it's just one of those plants where I want to see them in person. So that's why I picked those up. Those will go nicely, I think, with this red from this hookara right here. Then I have an Eliangus shrub that's, <laughs> you can't see it. It's over there. You want to focus over there? There it is. That's it. And I will probably use that as a centerpiece for these things. Just have the hookara for some texture and some big, bold color, the hellebores course for their beautiful flowers and then the Eliangus will come up out the middle. I think it would be nice to have something out here for winter interest that isn't just some sort of pine or spruce mixed in with some kale and some pansies. Not that that doesn't look beautiful, it absolutely does. It's just I've done it so many times. I thought it would be fun to mix it up a little bit. If the garden window in the house wasn't so full of gingerbread houses right now, I actually think th these would look absolutely lovely inside especially in that garden window it stays nice and cool especially in the evenings this time of year so i think they'd be happy there but that's neither here nor there that's not why i got them you know want me to go into the house plants now i'm ready to one of them smells phenomenal comment down below can you guess what it is 
It's a plant I talk about all the time. I have a few of them, and anytime I talk about them, I'm just like, oh, they smell so good. Philodendron Brazil. Lovely house plant. They grow really well. I actually picked this up because it's going to go into something that I'm doing for someone else. Though I may cut a little something off of it to keep for myself because they are absolutely beautiful plants. I love how the new growth has that fun orangey tone to it. Nice to have those variations. This does have some sort of a dried up either insecticide or fungicide on it. I'm not bothered by that. That's nothing. A little bit of dish soap and water won't take off the plant, but should get that off of there. Is, you know, they need to be able to absorb sunlight, so I would think that it would be happiest if it didn't have that coating on it. So I will be sure to give that a nice rinse, but it's just another, you know, vining philodendron with absolutely beautiful variegation on it. It's just a little baby, not much to it, but that's all right. Oh, and everything I got was at least 30% off. That's why I got a lot of stuff because they were at least 30% off. Some of them were 50% off. Who doesn't love a nice bargain? Ugh, it's so pretty. Such lovely plants. I don't have, I was gonna say many, I don't have any vining philodendrons anymore. Do I? I don't think I do. You know, in the past, I used to have a whole bunch of them and just hanging baskets and then, you know, they get, it gets kind of boring after a while and then you give them away or get rid of them. Every so often you see a plant that once upon a time you were bored with that you had years ago and it's just something nostalgic happens. You're like, oh, I want that. Not with this one. The Brazil wasn't one that I used to see all that often. I'm just talking about the classic old school normal. Vining philodendrons this is so pretty. Saying vining philodendron, that's very broad, isn't it? Nowadays, now that people are actually collecting these plants. You know what I mean? The heart-shaped philodendron, heart leaf, the philodendron uh, heteraceum, I believe that's what it is. You've seen it. It's like this, but just a lighter green color. Slight silver hue to them sometimes. I'm very particular about variegation on plants. And the Brazil, I do think it's beautiful. It's not one of my favorites, but the person that I'm going to be giving this to for the holidays, I know that they will absolutely love it. So I do very much appreciate and respect it. I can see the beauty and the variegation there on this particular plant. And uh, that's why I'm like slightly tempted to maybe take a piece off to keep for myself. I don't know. We'll see. Fern, just a fern a very pretty pateras type not entirely certain what the variety is i think that one of these had a tag that was near this that said uh maya i believe may i may i that's what it was oh this one has the tag too look at that it's right there there's the name just a lovely fern lots of texture the pateras types are some of my favorites they have a very graceful almost ethereal presence about them this one's a little bit crispy not a big deal, easy to fix. I do tend to kill these unless I make sure to pop them up into something that holds on to moisture for a long time. If you've watched a lot of my plant videos, then you might be aware that I tend to go for soil that drains very quickly, and that's to protect the plants from me because I'm a heavy-handed waterer. I always have to remind myself that with certain plants, the ferns and a lot of the others, to go ahead and use something that's going to hold on to that moisture. Still needs to drain well, but it doesn't need to dry quickly, at least not as quickly as some of the mixes that I use. Also, I think a self-watering container Probably a good idea for this one, just again, to protect it from the dry winter air in the house when you have the heat running. Things get very arid inside, which the ferns don't always appreciate. All that being said, it's probably a lot of unnecessary talking and background there because this is probably going to go into a terrarium. That's why I got it. But if it didn't go into a terrarium, then I would need to do something special with it or else I'd kill it. Oh, oh, it smells so good. Are you ready? Did you guess it? It doesn't have flowers on it. It's your last chance. That's the only hint I can give. It's not the flowers that smell nice. It's the foliage and the pretty. Just a bunch of shiny, glossy green leaves. It's a kangaroo puff fern, Microsorum diversifolium. There's the, there's the tag. I've been trying to gather these for quite some time now for a project that I would like to do where I'm going to need a whole bunch of them. And these used to be really common and easy to find. And then the houseplant craze happened and they just kind of vanished from mass production. They were selling out very quickly, which is great. I'm excited for anybody who's able to pick these up, any of the plants, and give them a try. Once upon a time, these were just hanging up with like the assorted hanging baskets at the big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. For like, you know, $12.99 to $14.99, you can get a pretty decent sized plant. And that hasn't been the case in a while, though I did find one not too long ago that was in a separate video. So I'm up to having three of them now. And I need like, I don't know, <laughs> probably 
nine more. Need about a dozen of them. I know that sounds ridiculous. It's for a project. And if I ever get all of them, or if these get big enough to start dividing them up and do it, you'll, you'll see it. It'll be in a video, I'm sure. I have had people say that they don't notice the fragrance on it. Maybe it's kind of like cilantro. You can taste it or you can't, or it tastes good or it tastes terrible. I'm one of the taste terrible people. Ugh, can't stand cilantro. Well, if you can't smell them, or maybe you're just not around the right time of day to get to experience the fragrance fragrance to get to experience the fragrance of the plant it's a very sweet smell it's almost like a vanilla ish kind of help me out down below if you can describe the smell that would be useful i just think of it as it's a very sweet clean scent and it's one that i very much enjoy having around i love the lush nature and texture to these plants very versatile ferns can be grown a multiple ways. It's not one of those ferns where it just has to be grown in the exact type of light with the exact humidity and exact moisture. I have noticed that these can really do fairly well in varying conditions and varying environments. For the summer, one of my larger ones, I gave it a pretty good amount of sun and it absolutely thrives. Hang out and do pretty well in medium light conditions, but they do prefer a nice bright filtered light to really get the best color and growth out of them. And then the typical fern things, moist soil, needs to drain well, organically rich, all that stuff. They don't crisp up and brown quite as quickly as others do as well. And since they don't have your typical pinnate type structure to the uh, leaves, like you would see on a lot of other ferns, on what we think of as a fern, they're not as messy. They don't drop anywhere near as much junk as you would have with like a Boston fern. But it's a totally different aesthetic. So I don't know, but maybe that point doesn't matter. I just love them. I think they're awesome plants. There's something just lush about them that makes me happy. There's something tranquil about them. Part of the background noise, the dog has a stick and he's having the time of his life right now. Okay, this one a little bit bigger. I have to back the camera up. Seba blue pothos, epiprenum panatum. Isn't it beautiful? I already have a couple, but this one's already on a totem. I've been wanting to put mine onto a moss pole for a while. <sighs> Turbo just started barking at the drip irrigation when it came on. It startled me. Hey, Toby, you come over and say hi. You got some big eye buggers, Toby. I'm gonna clean those up. This was a nice, big, established plant. I mean, look at the size of the leaves on this one. That's why I went ahead and picked this one up. And because it actually, if you look down here, you can see that it's starting to finish straight. Just a little bit. Not much, but that's the thing. That's why I was like, okay, I think this would be a worthy purchase, especially since it was very heavily discounted. Ones that I have, I had been thinking about putting onto a moss pole. It's one of those things where I'm like, I should do that, and then never got around to it. I mean, once you get them climbing and they start to attach themselves to something, that's when you start to get the larger leaves on them and then that fenestration. And I figured, it was like, well, the work's already done here for me, partially. It needs to go onto a larger moss pole. I have some larger ones to put this onto. I probably will hold off on doing that though until the springtime when I can have it outside and things are nice and humid and I can put drip to make sure to hit the pole so that it will stay attached to it. That's when they really start to go nuts. Any type of pothos, if you can get some moisture back in there where they attach themselves and that's when those leaves start to get nice and big. But it takes a while. It's a thing of patience to go ahead and put them onto the moss pole, wait for them to attach themselves. And over time, you'll start to get the larger leaves and then they will start to fenestrate, which you can see is just beginning down here. I already showed that, didn't I? Yep, just want it because the work's been done for me. This was a purchase of impatience, <laughs> as you could say. I was very happy that this was already attached to a pole and uh, a lot of time has been taken out of having to wait for it to start producing some of the larger foliage. It was a great price since it was on sale. And these are awesome plants. I love the Cebu Blue Pothos. The gorgeous, silvery foliage. I don't know how it's showing on camera, but this one does have a very, very, very nice bluish silvery hue to it. Pretty great house plants, fairly low fuss, an exciting addition to the collection. There's another one starting to get some of those holes in there, starting to fenestrate. Always an excellent addition to any plant collection because they're pretty simple to grow and they have such a bold impact, especially as they get larger and those leaves start to fenestrate. Right now it's just, you know, a few holes here and there, but over time, probably next summer when this is outside and the humidity and lots of rainfall, but it will start to get those nice, big, really pretty, bold leaves on it. I'm so excited. So exciting. I cannot wait. Toby, you ready to go inside? We can go inside and clean your face off, Toby. <laughs> we can head into the grow space. That's where the rest of the plants are. And everything else that's left are all hanging. It's not going to stay that way, but for right now, I figured it'd be easiest just to hang them up so we can have a good look at them. First off, 
It's a beautiful little wire vine. Really, not so little. It's a pretty big one. Isn't this lovely? So much fun. So much texture. I have another wire vine that's a lot smaller than this, and it just it was so big and so fluffy. I couldn't help myself. I had to get it, especially since, like I said, everything was discounted so heavily. Love the wire vines. They have excellent texture to them with their nice thin stems and then their stiff, shiny, glossy leaves. I like the darkness and the contrast that you have in there between the stems and the leaves as well. Good options for terrariums or just fun to have around. And wonderfully versatile. Full sun to shade, typically. I usually like to give them a pretty good amount of light, especially indoors. Indoors, the more light, the better. That's when I have the most success with them. Outdoors, in the shade, they've always done totally fine. Just a nice, fun plant that has really great texture. A fun one to have around. You know, I love my plants with nice, big, bold, strong leaves that stand out, but then when you get into the plants that have the tiny little leaves, they have all that detail to them. That's when things start to feel more lush and vibrant. And these pair well with other house plants with similar needs. I mean, that's that's kind of how pairing well goes with anything, right? Making sure that things have their similar needs met. A good cascader. That's all I meant. Hangs over the side of a pot very nicely. I also picked up another holiday cactus. Christmas cactus, Thanksgiving cactus, Christmas cactus is actually a different plant. I had several of these. And um, Turbo, my puppy, he, well, he destroyed them. So starting over, that, that's all right. Part of having the puppy. And it was totally my fault. I didn't realize that where I had them sitting during the summer was within reach through that puppy playpen area that I had outside. Like he could just kind of get to it just enough where I think he was slowly able to pull it apart without me noticing. So oops, won't do that again. Lesson learned there. And then I believe we saw this when I was at the nursery, right? So pretty. There's some foliage in the way here. Alessia Reppin's Pink Lady. Medium light, water when soil is dry, because it's a succulent. Awesome plants, okay, hold still. Gonna make people dizzy. They have a sparkliness to them. They have very fine hairs on the edges of the leaves, on the surface of the leaves, that is, and that makes them somewhat sparkle. Not sure how well that's going to show on camera, but in person, quite nice and sparkly. Sort of like um, some African violets, how they'll have a shininess to them when the light hits them at the right angle. Beautiful variegation, actually fairly heavy variegation. It just doesn't really show as well since the leaves are smaller and held so tightly in there, but there's nice hints of green and white and that lilac-y pink color that with more light usually intensifies some. This was getting a good amount of light at the greenhouse, so I doubt that there's going to be much of a change with the variegation on this one. I have struggled in the past with keeping the calicias during the winter time. And the culprit, as with most succulents, is overwatering. So I'm going to be very mindful to not overwater this. In fact, there's an attached drainage dish on here. I'm gonna pop that off because it doesn't need it. There doesn't need to be any water sitting in there at all. That will help get this through the winter time and help protect the plant from me and my heavy handed watering. Now, over the years, I've started to keep my succulents up high on a shelf out here in the grow space that doesn't have a catch underneath it for drainage, which helps an awful lot. So I have had much better luck over the last few years since I started doing things that way. It's just a constant reminder I need to move over there with, oh, don't water these very heavily because you'll get water all over the place and it'll make a big old mess. And I have had issues with the mealybugs on these before. Really any type of pest that gets into these because that foliage is so tight. The growth is so close together in there that anything that gets in there it's there and it can be difficult to get rid of. So that's just something else that I'll watch out for and be mindful of to stay on top of the spraying, make sure that nothing gets out of control there. So far, so good. Haven't seen too many mealies out here yet. So that's not normally a problem until late winter. You wanna focus? There we go. More succulents, the silver glory. Beautiful plant, isn't it? Absolutely love this one. Look at those leaves, so pretty. And this is a nice big one too, it trails down pretty far. Look at that. It goes all the, all the way down here. It's about a good 30 inches of drape on it. And this one is going out of flower and it looks like it has a small set of buds that are coming in. Don't they have the, don't they have the neatest little flowers on them? Those trumpet-like bells that come out from the sides of the leaves there. And it is absolutely covered in them. Not that easy to see because it blends in with the foliage pretty well. Doesn't stick out all that much. Yeah, anyway, you can kind of see those flowers better in there. Isn't that beautiful? Awesome plants. I love the leaves. 
look, they have that lily pad shape to them. They're nice and stiff. They're spread really far apart and they're silver. Love the silveriness on them. And again, just like with the wire vine, so much texture. Having those leaves further apart along those stems, even though, I mean, they shouldn't necessarily be quite this far apart. The plant could probably use a smidge more light. I find tranquility in having that sort of texture, that space, that airiness, something calming about it. I just enjoy it. And lastly, have this lovely Ripsalis cactus here. It's a nice big one too. Very large, lush, and full. This is a replacement plant, kind of like that holiday cactus was. I had one of these for years. I, oh my gosh, probably 15 years. I got it when I was a young teenager in Seattle, Washington. I was out there visiting my aunt and we went to a Fred Meyer and they had a little plant section there. There's a teeny tiny one there and I brought it home and I've had that plant ever since. Really simple to grow, very long lived. They are crazy easy to propagate. So it's one that you can have for a long time and give them away to other people. To me, this is a plant of nostalgia because it reminds me of my childhood and when I was kind of getting into plants and learning what they were and how to grow them, what I liked, what I didn't like, and, and the fun of propagation because this is one of those ones where, like I said, you just take a little piece, stick it back in the soil, and you have a whole entire little succulent bush <laughs> that comes from that. So it's a fun one to have around. Over time, these pieces will get nice and long. They'll get weighted down and they'll go, okay, I just kicked my tripod. It'll start to drape down even more and that will continue down even further. It's a fun succulent, kind of fuzzy. They have some fuzzies in there. And like I said, they're super easy to grow. One of my favorites, and again, I think that that's just a nostalgia thing. You know, sometimes we have memories tied to something. This is one that I have a lot of good memories tied to. So I'm really happy to have a new one. That last one was a victim of the 2020, all that stuff that was going on. Most of the plants I lost that year were due to them being either plants that like it dry or plants that like it sopping wet. It was a big ask to have people who don't really know plants taking care of all of my plants, you know, because of the cancer and all that stuff that was going on. And uh, having areas where I'd be like, okay, these need to be watered three times a day, like the Vandacious orchids, and then having other areas where I was like, don't water that. It made things difficult. I went through and I put little flags and the things not to water, but I probably could have been more thorough, but you know, there was a lot, a lot of other things going on at the time. So. It was mostly cactus and the succulents that didn't make it through all of that because it's, you know, sometimes hard to differentiate. Someone might see this and not realize that this is a succulent and that it probably shouldn't be getting watered once or twice a day, right? Yeah, it's one of those things where the that kind of knowledge comes with time and experience or watching lots of YouTube videos. Right, that's it though. That's everything. Lots of good plants. Absolutely love them. Lots of fun stuff here. I have a lot I need to do in here. Lots of pruning. This is from, I talked in a video or two ago about how it got down to 19 degrees outside. That didn't go very well for the plants that were in here. Be okay, really it was only a couple plants that like really didn't respond well. The heliconias, of course, being one of them. They'll be okay though, the rhizomes are still nice and firm. And that's all neither here nor there. Comment down below, say hi, having fun with your house plants that time of year starting to be stuck inside less stuff to do outdoors start to want to tend to the house plants and do fun things with them at least that's what i'm doing that's that's what gets me through the winter time is having my space in here to play with the plants and thanks for hanging out sorry there wasn't more time out shopping the stores were just it was so much chaos there were a lot of people around music was pretty loud pretty much everywhere i went i just i don't like to have other people in the background when i'm vlogging i think that's kind of disrespectful so I kept it to a minimum. I mentioned that because I know some of y'all really enjoy the trips to Lowe's. <laughs> there will be plenty more, plenty more, especially because I already thought of like three things that I didn't get while I was there. They didn't have the hooks. So I will have to go back for those anyways. There will always be more trips to Lowe's. In fact, probably like this afternoon. <laughs> like I said, need to get some things that I totally forgot about while I was there. Made a list, but wasn't complete. I mentioned I was out of town. As soon as I finished filming last week's video, I started editing cleaned the house, packed a suitcase, went to bed, got up a few hours later and went to the airport. And then I just got home like a day and a half ago. So <laughs> there's plenty of things to catch up on out here. Need to do some watering and some pruning and get some hooks hung up. And I need to pick out a heater. I got the go ahead for the heater. It's going to work out. I just have to pick it out. There's so many to choose from. It is scrambling my brain trying to pick one out. So that's what I'm going to do this weekend. I'm going to be on the computer reading reviews, trying to find the one that's going to do the best job out here and be the safest and best priced, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
shopping, reading. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.